Good morning. Welcome to God's house this morning here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Uh, it's great to have this chance to be with you all today to gather around God's Word together. Uh, so besides everyone here, also thankful that we're able to have people join us online too. So uh, as we gather here today, toward, we're getting toward the end of the, the church year, which sort of starts over in Advent um, in, in December. And in this end of the church year, we're looking toward the end times, uh, thinking about Jesus' return but what we're really thinking about is that time in between. All right, that's, that's what our series has been looking at. You know, what do we do now? Jesus has already ascended into heaven. We know he's going to return someday. What do we do in the meantime? And what we're thinking about today is the fact that it's a time for faithful service. Uh, it's a time God gives us to serve him. Uh, but it's not serving him like, you know, serving some sort of angry boss who's never satisfied and says more, more, more. We're serving someone who's constantly giving to us, who is overflowing in his love and his gifts for us. And so our service to him is, isn't coming from a thing of, oh man, I guess I got to do something for this guy. No, it's the, our thankfulness to our God and for his grace overflowing in the way that we get to serve him faithfully. So that'll be our focus for our worship today. We'll begin then with our opening hymn. Please stand. For our service today, we are following the service setting two. It's in your worship folder. It's on the screen behind me. It's also in the blue hymnal there, uh, page 172. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. 
I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit that we may always look forward to the end of this present evil age and the day of your righteous judgment. Keep us steadfast in true and living faith and present us at last holy and blameless before you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our God speaks to us in his word this morning, first of all, from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, chapter 1, and thinking about how God wants faithful service from us. Uh, here in the Old Testament, he was talking about how a lot of times his Old Testament people would kind of do the opposite of faithful service. They would still serve, but it was really going through the motions and sort of, well, we're doing what we got to do. And so it's a reminder for us uh, to serve not just because that's what you're supposed to do, but from the heart. So read from Isaiah 1. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifices What are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings, of rams and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations, I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals I hate with all my being. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. The word of the Lord. And then our God speaks to us again from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12. And... You know, back in the Old Testament, they would serve God, as we sort of heard about in that first reading, with actual sacrifices sometimes. Um, And here we're urged to give ourselves as a sacrifice, not not as an, an altar type thing, but our life, our life of service, of faithful service to our God, is our sacrifice of thanksgiving to him. Read from Romans 12. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. But rather, think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. The word of the Lord. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the gospel.
Our gospel for today is from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25, and this will also be the basis of the sermon this morning. Jesus is speaking. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. We'll continue then with our next hymn. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, this uh, coming week uh, that we're going into here is Thanksgiving week, and it always falls on Thursday, of course. And thinking about giving thanks to people, and it's interesting how we've kind of figured out in our minds, at least a lot of times, that certain things that you're thankful for kind of require their own expression of thanks. All right, so you're thinking about, uh, oh, we got to turn this on if it's going to work. We're thinking about, you know, how you say thank you to someone. And there are some cases where you can just say the word thank you. You know, someone holds the door for you, you know, thank you. Uh, or, or even sometimes there's, I don't know if it's the Minnesota thing, but there's like the, the thankful head nod. You know, it's just, it's understood that, hey, you know, thanks for doing that. Or, you know, there can even be the other nonverbal ones where you, you don't have a chance to say or, you know, something to someone. They've let you in in traffic. You know, they don't need to, but they've stopped and, you know, they kind of wave you in. And there's the, there's the thankful raise of the hand that, okay, I'm acknowledging that you've let me in. I appreciate that. Um, sometimes, though, you know, you do need to say thank you a little more. Sometimes certain situations, uh, like you might do a thank you card, right, where uh, a lot of times we think of these for maybe graduation gifts or wedding gifts, but there's other times, too, when, you know what, I want to I wanna say thank you with a card, but, you know, maybe write a little bit more and just, you know, how what you did was really appreciated. And, again, there's those certain times when, you know, that seems appropriate. There's other things, though, where to try to, to try to be thankful for these things, it's really hard because the thing that you're thankful for, you realize that there's nothing you can do to fully express how thankful you are. And, you know, there could be lots of examples of this. I, I was thinking of, you know, when, when someone receives, like, a, an organ transplant, you know, and I'm thinking from a living donor, although, you know, it'd be, it's a whole other thing, you know, if the, if the donor has died, and, you know, how do I say thank you for that? But, you know, how do you express thanks to someone who saved your life, you know, and was willing to make kind of a personal sacrifice, uh, possibly to their own health, to do it? You know, where, where do you start? You know, what do you do? Or you think of these situations where, you know, someone gets rescued and, and pulled out of danger. And I'm, by the way, apparently this picture is from a training exercise. It's not an actual drowning person. But, but again, what do you do that if someone does something like that for you? It doesn't feel right just to say, hey, thanks for that. Appreciate it. That doesn't seem like enough. Right? And so you, you probably want to do something more. Even though you know I, I can't say thank you or show thankfulness enough to make up for it, and you realize that, but you'd, you'd want to do what you can. If you saw the person, you know, who had, who had pulled you out of the water, for example, when you're drowning, you probably wouldn't be thinking, oh, you know, here comes this guy again. What does he want from me now? You know, oh, he's always bugging me. No, again, you're going to be remembering the worst day of my life, I thought I was going to die, and this person pulled me out Again, you, you'd probably be almost hoping, you know, is there anything I can do? Can I, can I help you in any way? And you, and you know it's not going to make up for what they've done, but you just, you're almost excited to contribute anything to help this person who has done so much for you. And that's kind of what I'm thinking of when we think of our response to our God. You know, our God who, who so loved the world, right, that he gave his one and only son, and we realize that, you know, even better than rescuing us from drowning, God has, has rescued us from hell. He has rescued us from eternal death, right? And he does that not because, well, you know, God sees that we're, we're good people and that we really don't mean any harm sort of thing. No, we're sinful, we don't deserve it, and he does it for us anyway. He gives us his forgiveness. He gives us eternal life, uh, all these free gifts of his grace. And again, we think, how can we thank him? Right? Because we want to thank him. And it's easy for us to get sort of in that kind of attitude where, well, yeah, I know I'm thankful for that, but I'm sort of stuck in the busyness of my current, you know, life, my current circumstances. And it's easy to think of, 
living out thanks to God is just kind of that extra hard thing to do. But when we really think about what he's done for us, it, it shouldn't be hard. It should be a joy to be able to do. So I'm thinking of that today with, I remember there was an old song um, that said, give thanks with a grateful heart. And okay, yeah, when you're thankful, you're going to be grateful. Uh, and I just switched the word around just so we can think about this, to give thanks with a faithful heart. Because as we look at this section of God's word, that's what God is asking is, is faithfulness from us. Faithfulness in using the many gifts he's given to us. And so as we think about that, I mean, God sort of gives us, you know, just like I mentioned, you know, seeing the person who helped pull you out of the water and you just sort of, you know, is there anything I can do? And, you know, you'd be just almost thrilled if they actually said, well, you could help with this, you know, you know name it, anything. Uh, well, God has named it, right? He says, I'm giving you not just your, your salvation, I'm giving you talents and abilities and I want you to find ways to put those into use in the world to point others to me. And again, when we really have put it in that perspective of this is what God has done for me, then we want to serve him. Then we you know, are thrilled to find anything where I can put the gifts God has given me to maybe even point others to him. To give thanks with a faithful heart and show that in our lives. So to do that, again, we're, we're looking at this other parable that Jesus is telling to his disciples where he, he gets us thinking about, you know, it, it's a story of an earthly situation, but it's really a, a spiritual goal that he has in mind for us. And so this is another one of those. He says, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. Uh, so Jesus likes these ones where someone's going on a journey and then he comes back and it's not surprising that he likes stories like this because it fits really well with the story of our Savior. Again, we're talking about this time in between. Jesus has ascended into heaven, and someday at the end of the world, Jesus will return. So the stories fit very well that, yeah, he's telling a, an earthly story, but the real story here is about, again, what do we do in this time in between uh, until our... Uh, you know, our master, so to speak, our savior comes back. He tells it like servants when their master is, is taking a while to come back. So, but here he's entrusting his wealth to them and we get it spelled out here. It says, and there's three, three servants. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. So we think about this, and if, you, if you've heard this Bible story before in your life, maybe the, the bags of gold sort of sounds a little funny. Uh, it seems like, ah, I don't remember bags of gold. Uh, that's because it's a newer translation uh, where they've tried to update it. The, so the original translation, it wasn't five bags of gold. It was five talents. And uh, now talent is a, like a weight amount, uh, usually of silver or gold, and it's actually a lot of money. Um, and so I think, you know, five bags of gold is a decent translation because the goal is to get people thinking of a lot, a lot of money. Um, although, you know, we can realize, and we'll talk about this later, how that word talent has come to mean something in the English language directly from this parable, and it's going to fit really well. But the idea here is to realize this is a lot, right? So... You know, I don't even know, bag of gold is kind of nebulous to us. We don't deal in gold very much, at least I don't. Uh, so again, picturing a bag of gold, I don't know if that helps us uh, much at all. But this, this original concept of a talent of gold, from what I read, it was basically like, if you think of what the average worker back then, you know, someone who would go and work in the fields or, you know, do some job, the average worker would receive, you know, a day's pay for doing that kind of job. Well, a talent would be equal to 20 years of that kind of work, right? So uh, the average job, this is 20 years salary, is just one of these, you know, talents or, or bags of gold, right? So when he's giving someone five, this is a gigantic amount of money. This is just, you know, you almost can't even you know, put it in your mind how much we're working with here, right? And so 
realize that in, in all these cases, he's giving a lot. Even the one he, gi- he gives one, I mean, we might hear this, oh man, that, that poor guy just got one. Well, that's, kind of a, that's kind of a ripoff, right? But no, um, this is a huge amount that he's giving to each one. And it says, you know, it's each according to his ability. So he realizes, you know, maybe some people are, they're going to have a harder time handling, like if it was five. So one is, is perfect for them, right? So he's not, this isn't a judgment against any of these three, the amount they're given. It's just, all right, this is the, this is the abilities of this one. Um, they're going to be, they're going to do well with this. So he's giving them a lot. So in, in all of these cases, each person is just getting a ridiculous amount um, in our minds. And, and then he's going away. And it's kind of nebulous in our mind. What, you know, what does he want them to do with this? And what we sort of see as, as he continues, uh, the man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and, gave, and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. Uh, but the man who had received one bag went off dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. All right, so they each kind of do their thing. Now, it's still pretty vague. Put his money to work. You know, what what is going... And it's meant to be vague, right? You know, we don't know what exactly they were doing, and that's kind of not really the point. But the idea is they're using the money to, I don't know, start a business or... have a project that you need workers and it's going to and use the money to pay the workers and to put something into motion that is going to put that money to use and be profitable somehow, right? Uh, and a tricky thing for us is that, we, you know, maybe we hear this and so we just, we think in terms of money. Uh, and that's why, you know, that original, that original term for the money, a talent, um, really kind of fits well, because this is where we get our word in English for talent. Uh, And so the point he's making here is that God gives different, different talents, different abilities to all his people. And he's asking us to put those things to use. And so one of the main points that we want to remember here is that God gives us more than we need to serve him. Again, to, to none of the servants in the reading was the master being kind of stingy. You know, again, that, man, one bag of gold, one talent. Um, come on, you got, there's nothing else you can give me here? No, this is a lot. Remember, 20 years uh, of an average person's salary was what this, this was. So again, this is huge. And the reminder for each of us, I mean, we think, like I said earlier, God has given us you know, so much to be thankful for in our salvation, right? And that's all equal. All believers have been rescued from the same eternal death. All believers um, have been rescued, and and by God's promise, by faith, he says, heaven is yours. And that's, that's all the same. And then on top of that, you know, if, as if we would ever say, you know, that's all you're giving me, God? You know, eternal salvation? You don't have anything else? Right? But he does give us more, right? On top of that, he gives us other gifts for our lives now, right? He, he gives us family and friends. He gives us uh, different uh, abilities, different, uh, you know, earthly things. But he does those things differently, right? And particularly with those gifts and abilities. There are some people who are really good at one thing, and some people who are less good at that. We saw that in this, um, the second reading today from the book of Romans, in Romans chapter 12, you know, where he's saying, you know, if someone's gift was you know, prophesying, he says, well, then have them do that. And if it's teaching, let them, let them do that. And if it's leading, let them do that. The point is to look at these different gifts God has given you and put them into use, right? Whatever they are. And, and so we don't want to get caught up in the idea of, well, he wants it to be profitable, so how do I, you know, double my money um, with my gift? And that's, that's kind of not the main point that Jesus is making here. The main point is putting it to use faithfully. Because there was one, of course, in this reading who wasn't putting it to use faithfully. And we, see that, we saw that in that last person. Uh, he had received one bag, went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. And we'll get to 
you know, his explanation for that in a second. But the point that we're thinking of here is that he didn't use it. He had this whole thing, and, and again, 20 years worth, and he didn't put it to use. And so again, the reminder for us, there, there is none of us that can say, well, I don't really have talents um, that I could use for God's kingdom. None of us can say that, right? Because God has promised he's given to everyone in different ways. Yes, he's given us all the amazing gift of eternal life and forgiveness and salvation, but on top of that, he's given us other abilities. And it's always, and, and I think this is, you know, if you were the devil, <laughs> I think you'd want to say, boy, what can I do? All these, all these believers have all these gifts. What can I do to make a mess of it for them? You know, I'll make them jealous of each other's gifts, right? And, and so, we, you know, we do tend to do that, where we think, uh, well, I don't have the gifts that so-and-so has, or they're so good at this, and then we use that, and I think the devil wants us to think of it this way. If we're not jealous of them, then we use it to think less of ourselves, to almost the point where, you know, I'm kind of useless. I, don't, I can't do with someone. I can't, you know, and fill in the blank for whatever it is. You know, I can't do whatever this person does, so therefore, I almost don't count, and so just kind of count me out. But no, right, God has given each person, and sometimes it's, you know, it's, it can be hard to figure out what our gift is, you know. Uh, sometimes we have to try different things. Uh, sometimes we have to, you know, maybe be put in sometimes uncomfortable situations trying to use a gift to see, you know, is this something that fits me? Um, so, you know, it's a process. We're, you know, it's not always really obvious to us, although sometimes it's obvious to people around us. Oh, yeah, you're really good at this thing. Uh, but the point is, God has given us lots of gifts, lots of talents, and, it, it, and it's usually not just one thing. And yes, it might be different from someone else. And yes, we might not be, you know, want to do this, that, or the other job that someone else does in God's kingdom. Because the other temptation here is to think, well, serving God, does that only apply to like pastors and teachers? Or maybe someone else who is actually working for a church? Uh, and the answer is no. Um, yes, those are, those are one way, right, to serve God. But again, God has given us these talents and abilities to be able to serve him in so many different places in our lives, in our families. We have talents and abilities to be able to serve our God as we're in our families. It can be at some other job that in, in our minds, we might think, well, that has nothing to do with my faith or, you know, God's kingdom. But guess what? We're, we're in this world, and God has, has put us, perhaps, in this other job where we might think, how can I serve him through this? How can I serve my God by serving the people around me at my job or in my family? Or that the people who live near me, you know, whatever the case may be, God has, has gives us opportunities every day to serve him. And so we think, it, it, there really is no end to the possibilities, right? And, it, and it's hard to even mention specifics because it, real, it could literally be anything and anyone around us that God might be able to use us to serve him by serving them. So I think, you know, how, how can I do this? But the main point, God gives us more than we need to serve him. So now we kind of see the end of the story of, of how things shake out when basically the picture here is when Jesus returns. Uh, and then we'll, we'll kind of go back and think, you know, what does this mean for us now? But so we hear after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. He, he'd given them a huge amount of money. Sure, he wants to know, all right, what are we, what are we talking now with, with what's happened with this. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. So he's being pretty upfront, saying, here's what it was. Now, and we realize, of course, when we think about our gifts, it, it's a little harder to say, you know, what the results sometimes of us, even using our gifts faithfully, it, it might not be so easy to say, well, here's the quantifiable results uh, and we realize that, and that's not really the point that Jesus is making here, but sometimes that can put our minds at ease when we think, well, wait, I haven't doubled my gifts. What, what does that even look like? Again, that's less the point that he's making. Uh, but we hear a good, 
a good report from the, from the master. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Right? So it's a, is it kind of a good ending? You know, what, what does that mean? He'll be in charge of many things. It just, again, he's happy. He's enjoying his master's happiness. And that, that five bags of gold for how much it, as it was pales in comparison for, you know, what he's in store for. Right? And again, we're thinking eternal life, you know, here. Um, the man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. And very similar. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. All right, so that went well. But now we hear the one where, of course, it doesn't go so well. Uh, then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. All right, so we hear this, and, you know, we already kind of known, if you remember when I read the text earlier, the master really doesn't like this answer, right? He's, he's not okay with this. But there's a part of us that, you know, kind of wants to say, well, yeah, but... It's not like this guy stole from him. He didn't go and take the 20 years salary for personal gain and just kind of enjoying himself. And there's people in other parables who do, you know, bad stuff like that, right? So we're thinking, okay, he's not really doing really bad things. He's returning the money, right? He's giving it back to him. So it doesn't seem so bad. So, you know, we're kind of already thinking, well, what, what's there to get so mad at? But again, realize the master had given this person an absolute abundance, 20 years of salary to do something with, right? And, you know, how long did it take to to dig the hole? Probably not super long. And again, I don't know how big a bag this would have to be to, to contain this amount, but probably not, it's not like he labored for years doing this. The master was gone for a long time, right? It's not like this guy had to dig the hole for a long time, he didn't. This, that would have taken no time at all, and then he just sat there with it under the ground. Um, again, think about that a little bit as we get to the response here. So his master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. He's saying, you know, almost literally the least you could have done, if you put it in the bank, you know, it'll at least do something. But you've done nothing. You know, you've done nothing with it. And, and when we think about that response, you know, if you kind of read between the lines of what the servant said, you know, I knew you're a hard man, and you do so much, so I was a little afraid of you. You know, what he's really doing is, is blaming the master. You know, you're never satisfied with anything. Right? You just you collect stuff from everywhere and you're pretty ruthless about it. And really, it's kind of your fault that I was scared uh, because you're kind of not the nicest person. And so, hey, at least you're getting your stuff back and maybe you should be happy with that. Right? It's really this attitude against the master. And that, that might help us understand the negative reaction here. Um, you know, where he's so angry and you know, couldn't you have at least done something? And and again, we'll think about what this last one, you know, what what does that look like in someone's life? But we hear the end of the story where, again, it goes from bad to worse um, for how the servant, you know, what what becomes of the servant here. You know, so take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. All right, so again, this, again, in our minds, boy, this escalates very quickly, right? Because it's not just, and and again, sometimes we we put this in the context of business owners, and we think, oh, business owners today, they just want more profits. And, you know, is that really how, is God just like this business owner who says money, money, money? And that's not the point here. Um, So again, why is he so mad putting it into the context of God has given us 
all these abilities, poured them out on us. Again, like we said earlier with our first main point, more than we need to serve him. And the attitude that we're being warned against isn't not making enough money and getting on that conveyor belt and start producing whatever it is we're producing. The attitude is this, when I talked about uh, give thanks with a faithful heart, this attitude is a thanklessness. This attitude is a, God, I don't trust you. Uh, You uh, are just so angry and you, you're never satisfied and nothing anyone could be is enough, so I didn't do anything because I couldn't make you happy anyway. So again, we think, you know, what does that mean for our lives? The encouragement there, I think, is pretty clear. Use God's gifts to serve him faithfully. And, and there might be someone with a, maybe a tender heart, uh, a tender conscience that... that that might kind of want to say, I don't know if I'm doing enough. Because, oh man, again, how, how could I actually do enough with, with my talent, whatever that talent is, or talents are, you know, more likely, we have many different talents, but how can I actually use those to serve him? And I hope that then in talking about this, the goal truly is not to discourage us like that and to think that, Oh, I could, never, I could never do enough with what I have. No, remember, God has given us an abundance. He has given us more than enough. God isn't asking us to do something that we're not able to do. In fact, just the opposite. He is the one who has enabled us, right? These gifts and abilities, remember, he's the one who gave them to us. Even when we think, uh, well, gifts and abilities, that's like, that's determined by genetics and well, what mom and dad were good at, and then you get maybe uh, some sort of you know, random sampling of what mom and dad might have been good at. Well, okay, sure. But really, God is the giver behind all those things, right? He is the one who gives these gifts to us. He is the one who controls the results when we use them, right? If someone responds to our gifts and, and whatever the case may be, that's also God's doing, Every part of this is God's gracious giving to us. Someone saying, well, I'm scared of his reaction, so I'm not going to do anything. What he's really talking about is is unbelief, right? Is rejection of God's gifts, right? And do people do that? Unfortunately, yes, right? And, you know, we we never want to be pulled in that direction. We never want to keep listening to what the devil says and say, well, I'm no good, and, and, and finally... Why am I listening to that God anyway? You know, he's never satisfied, right? That's, that's not coming from God. That's, that's coming from our, our sinfulness. That's coming from the devil himself. Again, when we look at what God's really saying, what he has done, he's been, done nothing but give. So that, that response, it isn't about, oh man, now I gotta make enough widgets or whatever the case may be. I gotta make enough things. I gotta bring in enough profit to make that slave driver up in the sky happy with me. No, he has given us all these things. And he is the one who is working through us and in us when we use those gifts and abilities. So all we we need is that reminder, serve him faithfully. The times that we haven't used them perfectly, thank God that he's won us forgiveness for those times. Because none of us have used our gifts 100% perfectly every day of our lives unfortunately we fall short we're sinful we we need the god who gave his son as the atoning sacrifice for our sins because again if it was be perfect or else the or, the or else isn't good because none of us have been perfect but jesus has paid for those sins and it's in thanksgiving for that very forgiveness it's in thanksgiving for giving us the very gifts he's given us that's what overflows into being able to faithfully use those things. And as we do that, it's, it's going to be sometimes trial and error of how we use God's gifts and how we can best make use of those. And really our whole lives is figuring out how can I best serve my God in the place where he has put me in this world with the abilities and talents he has given me. But what a blessing to be able to figure out. He's given them to us Now serve him faithfully. And the motivation from that, remember, isn't 
he's going to get me if I don't. The motivation is that giving thanks. Of, out of thanks for what he's done for us, that's what overflows with that faithful heart that he also has to give us. And thank God he does. Right? So serve him. Yes, uh, later this week we'll think about Thanksgiving more, as, as we always do. But this is really about all our lives and the abilities and gifts he's given to each one of us. Right? And thank God that he's given us those abilities and we look forward to hearing the response really forever. That through Jesus and by God's faithfulness to us, we get to hear that response from, from our, our heavenly master when he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. I invite you then to please stand. As we take this chance to confess our faith in the triune God, And we do this this morning using the words of the Nicene Creed, so I invite you to say these words along with me. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. And we'll continue then with our prayer of the church. Um, We're going to have a a special prayer included in this today. uh, For uh, earlier this week, we had a... Um, a call meeting to call uh, uh, another pastor here to Good Shepherd, and we extended that call to Pastor Jason Liebenau. Um, so we're going to keep um, he, him and his family in our prayers today also. But we'll speak together the, uh, uh, the responsive prayer that's on your screen and in your worship folders. Eternal Lord, give us peace as we ponder the good news that you forgive our sins in Christ. Lead us to see clearly the path you have laid out for us. Provide courage and compassion to all who preach and teach your word. Fill them with a love like yours as they proclaim your grace to us and all people. Guard and guide the families of our congregation. Lead husbands and wives to love each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Help parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus all their lives. Grant joy to those who are single and make them a blessing to others. Provide wisdom and insight to, to those who make laws and set policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime. Lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens and to defend those who cannot defend themselves. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and open the gates of heaven. Us 
Extend your healing power to those who are sick and suffering in body or mind. Give patience and compassion to all who care for the sick and dying. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for using us as instruments in your service to extend a divine call for another pastor here at Good Shepherd. Bless Pastor Jason Liebenau with the wisdom and maturity he needs to consider where to serve you and your people. Be with him and his family during this time of consideration of the calls he holds. We trust that your Holy Spirit will bring us the very servant we need as we seek to serve you at this time and in this place. And Lord, we also ask you to hear us as we pray in silence. Gracious God, you govern and direct all things, and you love all people. Hear our prayers spoken in silence, and answer them in your wisdom and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll continue then with our offering. While the offering is being gathered, we invite you to fill out the Connect card that you find on each row, and those viewing us online can fill out the online Connect card also. Thanks. We'll continue with the section leading up to the Lord's Supper. I invite you to please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
Lord God, you are worthy to receive thanks and praise from all people. You created the world and all who live in it, and in your mercy, you saved us. We give thanks to you for the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. Though in very nature God, he took the nature of a servant and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. He offered himself as a sacrifice for sin and redeemed us from its curse and penalty. He rescued us from the terrors of death and restored eternal life with you. He conquered our enemies and gained for us the kingdom of grace and glory. Bless us as we receive your son's body and blood and lead us to remember his suffering, death, and resurrection. Forgive our sins and fill us with the hope of new life in heaven. Hear our praise and receive our thanks as we worship you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Those who will be joining us at the Lord's table invite you to follow the directions of the ushers and come for all things that have been prepared.
Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet you have given us in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. Once again, good morning and welcome to Good Shepherd. It's great to be with you here today to praise our God together and receive his gifts to us in word and sacrament. A couple of announcements uh, first of all, special thanks uh, to all who are, who are with us uh, or took part in that service project over at Havenwood for our faith night last week. Uh, it was a really fun time, and it worked well. Trying to figure out how we're going to move everyone over there is always slightly awkward, so thanks for bearing with us. And, but it was a good night, and thankful for all the help for that. Um, we will not have faith night this week uh, because it's Thanksgiving week, and we have, we're going to do our, our Thanksgiving Eve worship service on that Wednesday. That service is at 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. Um, there is not a service on Thanksgiving Day this year, so make a note of that. Um, the only service is Thanksgiving Eve. Um, there is the Lord's Supper at that service, just so you're aware of that also. Um, then after the Thanksgiving Eve service, and I think we've done this for a few years now, uh, we have kind of this pie and ice cream social uh, basically, we provide the ice cream and, and some beverages, and if you're able uh, and it works out, uh, bring some pie and, above all, some, something to like cut and scoop the pie with, because we don't have a million of those here. Uh, but if you bring that, uh, it works out really good, because usually there's a little variety there, and it's kind of the celebrating with the church family a little bit uh, for Thanksgiving, a little meal, before uh, uh, often you are able to celebrate with uh, your other family you know, uh, following that. So looking forward to that this week. Um, also, uh, I did mention that we had uh, um, sent that call to Pastor Liebenau. Um He did write back. I, I, I didn't print it out f- for it here, but he did acknowledge the call, that he's received it, uh, and that he will be prayerfully, prayerfully considering it. I believe we sent that in the weekly update email. Uh, but just so you're aware, he has, he has received that. And uh, keep him in your prayers as he, uh, as he does the same and uh, prays for where, where best he can serve. Um, there, I'll start this way. Advent by Candlelight is a special event going on today. Uh, it's an event for women. It's today at 2 p.m., and it goes till about 4 p.m. If you're interested in going and you hadn't signed up, they told me, just come. Uh, come and join us, uh, and that's, that's just fine. Um, the, the goal is to bring a, I believe, a Christmas cookie or favorite Christmas snack of some sort to share uh, so if you can do that uh, in some way, that'll be perfect. So that's, that's later today. And now because of that, they have, they have the uh, Fellowship Hall gym area set up for that. So we're having, we do have refreshments today, but it's set up kind of in the main entryway area. And that's where we're, you know, um, donut holes are crumbless, we're, we're hoping. Uh, but yeah, just, you know, do the best you can with those. But because uh, we're we're, we don't usually do it in a carpeted area. But uh, so by all means, join us for the, uh, those, and there's, there's the Panera things down in the, the other way, too, if you want to check those out. Uh, but greet those around you. Uh, greet someone you know and someone you don't know, but uh, rejoice today as you give thanks, not only this week, but, but all throughout your lives, that God has just given so many gifts to you, uh, and that you get the privilege then to serve him faithfully. So thanks. We'll see you again. <laughs>